it's surpassed all our expectations in every sense, whether it's from the attendance of fans, um, whether it's the learnings that we've had from the FIFA Arab Cup, um, whether it's in the stadiums, public transport, we've stress tested a lot of our operations, which have been very good. I mean, I can give you a few examples. Um, 20 to 25 percent of all fans who attended the games used the metro and public transport, which is something that hasn't happened um, before, even in our previous events. Um, the other thing is uh, we've tested the fan ID. We had 200,000 as our target to test, and we've reached the target of 200,000 fan IDs. Obviously, with the fan IDs, there's a lot of key learnings there, and uh, we're moving into the next phase of testing uh, prior to the World Cup. Uh, I mean, that had um, a lot of benefits in terms of testing it, the physical fan ID, the digital fan ID, and uh, we're confident now that we're going to get it right. Um, so, I mean, even in terms of the broadcast, the viewership was, were really good. I think everybody's surprised by the success of the tournament, and uh, there's big calls for the tournament to continue uh, in its current format. Nasa, you must agree with me on this, that our main concern now is the actual COVID-19. Now it's hitting all the sports. What is the plan? Are we still going to have a full capacity stadiums? We're hoping and quite confident that when the World Cup is around, we'll have um, full capacity stadiums. We've seen that now. We've seen that um, the, uh, the group stages were at 75% capacity. Then when we moved into the later stages, they went to 100% capacity. And this is also part of the test. All the data that's coming out from the Ministry of Public Health are quite good. I don't want to say positive, but they're quite good. Um, so we're confident. We have strong protocols in place. So now, as you know, we're the first country to have um, hosted games with fans um, during the pandemic. Um, our protocols um, have been refined and improved. We've shared our protocols with other governing um, sports governing bodies. They've implemented uh, them, whether in whole or in part. And uh, we have our protocols and policies for the World Cup ready right now that have been shared. Um, so. We are as ready as we can be. Now the rest is for uh, making sure the world is able to keep COVID in check. If things get worse, do you think it will be like the Olympics in Tokyo and the Beijing Games, like that we're not going to accept any fans? Look, uh, I mean, I'm not a scientist, um, but in the medical world, they, they hopefully say that the worst is behind. I mean, whether it's on the, on the um, mutations and the vaccines and the effectiveness of these vaccines. I mean, we're hoping that it'll only get better from here. Now, so let's talk about the issue that's been overshadowing this World Cup since day one, the human rights. And we can't ignore the protest of some players. What do you respond to those protests? I think the players who protest have a right to protest. Everybody has their right on social positions, um, political positions, whatever they may be. But what we ask of the players specifically, because you know um, they're quite vocal, they have huge followers, we ask of them to really understand the facts and uh, stay away from what they read in headlines, stay away from campaigners that have uh, certain agendas behind them, because if they were to look at the facts and to speak to reputable, reputable organizations that have been following Qatar's development and progress over the past 10 years, they will see that what Qatar has done in terms of workers' welfare, worker standards, improving their working conditions is quite enormous. And um, over the span of 10 years, nothing like, any, nothing like this has happened in the world. Um, the introduction of minimum wage, um, the improving of accommodation standards, um, and the abolishing of kafala, giving people the, the, the freedom to move from uh, one employer to the other. Um, these, are all have, these are all enshrined in legislation right now. And you know, countries take decades and decades to pass legislation in, uh, through parliament and through the judicial bodies um, anywhere in the world. So people really need to see the amount of work that Qatar has put, the progress it has made. They need to put it into context of the region and where Qatar stands in the region. I'm sure that if, if these players actually went to dig into the facts rather than just listen to campaigners and follow a trend, they would understand that instead of campaigning um, against Qatar, they would actually be campaigning for Qatar. And this is something I urge all players. They have a responsibility because they have a huge following. They have a responsibility because they are the reason this World Cup is happening, is for them to contest against other teams and ultimately lift the trophy. So I can't imagine being a player um, standing for something that's absolutely false, standing for something that they are misinformed about. And unfortunately, they listen to headline news, 
headlines are made to sell, and they're not necessarily true. This would be my strong, strong message to the players and their national associations. So moving into the next one, there are worries among the LGBT community, whether they will be welcomed in Qatar. As an expat who's been living here for a long time, we know the culture, we know the laws, but people coming in from outside, they don't. What can you tell them to allay any fears? I've said it before. A, Qatar is a welcoming country. Qatar is a tolerant country. We as World Cup organizers um, are welcoming all fans, regardless of um, their backgrounds, ethnicity, religion, um, sexual orientation. At the end of the day, everyone is welcome here. What we ask of people, all visiting fans, and not just um, uh, people always talk about the LGBT community. We're asking all the fans to make sure that they understand the norms of the country, they understand the laws of the country, as they would anywhere else they go. When they travel to, to, to foreign countries, they always try to understand the culture, the norms, the, the laws of the country, and that's just normal. And like I said, we need to demystify uh, Qatar because there's nothing that is um, different than Qatar, than the rest of the world. Um, people live here. Qatar is a very international um, uh, country. We have over 150 nationalities living and working here in Qatar, and we all coexist peacefully. And you know, as you know, Qatar is probably right now top 15 safest countries in the world, number one safest country in the world, uh, um, Arab country. Um, people have nothing to worry about. I pass them the strong message. You're all welcome here. It's going to be an amazing event. Um, the World Cup in Qatar is going to be the best and the most unique World Cup ever. Generally, I think um, people, when they travel to other countries, they quickly understand the norms in the country. And I think people are quite curious about it right now. And once people start to plan their trips here, they're going to do a lot of research. They will speak to friends and family who live here. I've been to three World Cups before, and I see that fans generally, generally respect the culture, they respect the norms, they respect the, the laws of the countries, and we haven't really seen big issues in previous World Cups. And I'm confident that it's not going to be any different uh, here in Qatar. Um, we're welcoming people, we're tolerant people, and um, I think it goes both ways. People also have to be tolerant of their host, um, and you know, it's, it's, it's going to go in that direction. You've seen during the Euros there have been some fan trouble in England. How is policing going to work during the tournament? Well, look, uh, the good thing is we've had people there. You know, we've been doing observation and secondment programs in, ma in major events um, starting back in 2014 in Brazil. So um, these are all key learnings that we use. And I think um, also during the Euros they've had uh, a, a review of what happened and, and that's being shared with us and we have people that are in close contact with them there to make sure things like this don't happen. I mean, you can have as many plans as you want, but fans are fans. Emotions run high in football, and it's, uh, it's how you deal with it, it's how you react to it, um, and you know, it's, it, it's something you have to expect, it's something you have to be prepared for, and uh, confident that all the organizers and security personnel will be able to deal with it. Some football fans have been asking a lot of questions, my friends as well. Well, the first question is about tickets, which I don't have. But the second question is about alcohol in the stadiums. Did you work out an alcohol policy? Look, uh, generally, as you know, that um, alcohol is available in Qatar, and this is something that a lot of people uh, um, ask about. Uh, but a lot of people that live in the region know this and understand this. And I don't think the question of alcohol is going to be an issue um, as much as people um, predict or, or even anticipate. Um, I think people are going to come here and realize Qatar is just like any other country that they visit and go to vacations on. Now, so let's turn our focus to the Qatari national team. They didn't get the Arab Cup, but are we going to support them to perform really well for the um, World Cup? Their performance has been great. Um, they've, uh, they've been involved in a lot of competitions uh, internationally, Copa America, They've uh, been in the European qualifiers as a, as a visiting uh, um, participating nation. And they were involved in the Gold Cup in the US. And this is all for the development. We saw their performance in the Arab Cup. Um, they reached the semifinals. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it to the final, but they're contesting. Uh, um, they're, they're, you know, they played very well. And they're contestants um, for the World Cup to go very far, hopefully. 
Nasa, finally, um, this is about you personally. I haven't seen you in quite some time. You've lost a little bit of weight, a few gray hairs. <laughs> How's your stress level? Uh, Are you feeling the pressure as look, we get nearer? Look, uh, the pressure is always there and the pressure is good. It keeps you on your toes, it keeps you prepared. But I think with the um, passing of time, with the uh, different test events that we've, we've gone through as a team, with the team growing, um, gaining experience, I think people have become a lot more confident. The synergy uh, between the team is there, the harmony is there. Um, we're, the Arab Cup has really been a tremendous opportunity for us, um, have, for FIFA. We're all leaving this Arab Cup more confident um, for a really amazing World Cup.